Hey everybody, this is Julin and my grandma Janet. Hello. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my patio here in Santa Monica. It is a beautiful day, grandma, here yes. in the mid of October. We actually had lunch on the patio, which was really nice. So I started my day per usual, 4.30 in the morning, getting up for work, taught all morning, and then did a killer workout on the rooftop came home, filmed for the Drilling with Jolyn, which I thought was really cute. One of my subscribers had commented on that. So I was really happy that we were able to film that. Yes. And then we switched gears and we have the potting tray here set up on my Tiffany blue table. And my grandma did an amazing job cleaning up my space here, my patio. So we're gonna do a Planting with Jolyn episode and we got a bunch of things happening here. We're gonna be doing some switches. We got some new planters that are thrifted or brand new that I wanna go ahead and incorporate in today's episode. We got new plants, we got cuttings, we got a whole bunch of stuff. So at the end of the video and this episode, we're gonna be fixing up my Marble Queen Pothos, which I talked about my original one. So we're gonna set up propagation on that one. So I hope that inspires you to save your plants that are looking a little leggy. And then we're gonna be splitting up my zigzag cactus, which I just bought as a side project, which I am hoping to gift in the future as well as sell a bunch of them. So stay tuned for that. But for now, we're just gonna work on a few things here to kind of get them not out of the way, but at least done up. So the first one that we wanna work on is a cutting that's been sitting in my collection of my propagation station for a good minute. So this guy is, I think, I believe I got this from the Bay Area. I wanna say I got him from the Bay Area and I talked about it in a Bay Area haul. Now this one was originally planted up in a previous Planting with Julian episode in a smaller planter. But since it's the same type of plant from the same place, I wanna go ahead and regroup them here. There's enough roots for me to go ahead and plant it up. Um, and these are fairly, very easy plants. They're not finicky plants. And I believe this is part of the Cressula family. And I wanna say a variety of the jade. Let me know down in the comments below. I want to say so and you have to be very careful with this particular plant because if you see there's tons of fingerprint markings on here so you just want to be very careful but I'm going to go ahead and group them together into the thrifted planter that we just drilled a hole in and I think we did great and this particular planter came from Arizona right, so grandma let's go ahead and fill the pot up Thank you for being my assistant in today's Planting with Julian episode. It's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we're just gonna make it work here. And then I always like to have it, we can fill it up a little bit more. I'll hold it up here and you can go ahead and fill in the pot. So I'm really happy that we got to do this episode before my grandma flies out to Arizona tomorrow with me. She's staying back for a couple of months, so she will be working on all of the aprons and pot holders and decorative pillow covers for you guys in Arizona. So I'm really happy that we're able to have that project for my grandma in Arizona, keeping her busy and then something tangible you guys can have from us. That looks great. And then let's go ahead and get it right. I'm gonna turn it here. I think that looks great, Grandma. Perfect. And then what I like to do is use my fingers to press down at the same time so that it'll stick up nice and tall and grounded. And in time, when it gets rooted up in the pot, it'll stand up tall on its own. But being this close to the soil right now is like flaring up my allergies. I've been sneezing since the time I woke up. My allergies was giving me a problem. I think that worked out really great, Grandma. What do you think? Super. All right, so here's the final look. So we have the cutting that got planted up in a previous Planting with Julian episode. But since it's the same plant, I went ahead and I put it out of the planter, which doesn't stress me out at all, and group it in with the bigger uh, part of him so that they can be one happy family and the planter will look a little full. At least I know in the future if I ever wanted to do a trade or anything like that, I know this is one separate plant here. And I think it works out well. What do you guys think about the pairing? I think that's super cute. So this is a cutting that I got from my host in the Bay Area, which was really nice of her. I got a really big haul. If you guys are new to my channel, check that video out. And then this is a thrifted planter that I got in Arizona in my 
last Arizona trip. So I'm glad how that worked out. Yes. That's so cute. So let's just work with what we have here. We got some cuttings here. So we're going in no particular order. These aeoniums, I believe, came from Tanya. And they're all rooted up. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. So this one has been living in dirt and it has roots here. And then there's a bunch here that's been living in a water propagation system here. As you can see, there's water roots here. So I did a combination, some in water and some in dirt, and they got roots. So I want to go ahead and stick them all together in the thrifted planter or little uh, saucer thing that I got for... Actually, this is for cream. Yeah? yeah. And this is an Arizona thrift, which I got from a really cute uh, pet... Uh, nonprofit organization thrift shop. So this is a little thrifted find from Arizona and we just drilled a little hole in it for planting julienne in this previous video that we just wrapped up. So I just want to go ahead and group them in here and then in the future if I ever wanted to uh, gift aeonium cuttings, I know I gave a really big one to Akira for her birthday. Um, I know I can just easily take them out and I would love to have these in ground, but again, I don't plant anything in ground here because I do rent my space, so everything are in pots. Hence why I love doing the Pot of Things series on my channel. And I just love like the quirkiness of this. I think it's so cute. It has a very eclectic look to it. And aeoniums get really leggy. And um, yeah. they're, li they're really funky, but I love how that worked out. I'll give it a little spin here so you can see what it looks like. What do you guys think? I think it's cute and works for me. Again, if they're not happy, I'll check on them in a couple of months. I can easily switch it up into something else. But for now, I think this works out great. And this will probably end up if we have space on my plant shelf. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and work on our next project. So it looks like we were taking care of cuttings. So on the theme of cuttings, let's work with the last cutting I believe that we're going to be working on today, which is this beautiful colancho. And I believe I got this one either from Carmen in Arizona or Evelyn in Long Beach. I want to say this is the one that Evelyn gave me. It is so cute. As you can see, there's tiny little cute spots on here. And then we're going to put it in an ice cream planter. So that is going to be it for that guy. And I chose the ice cream planter because it is on the tall side. And you just got to be really careful when you're handling um, these colanchos because they have little babies and they're known for the mother of thousands on the edges here and um, they're very like leggy and fragile so whenever you're handling these particular guys along with the donkey's tail which we will do for our last cutting so you'll see that you have to be very fragile when you work with them and then my grandma's using that finger technique pressing down the soil to get it nice and grounded and in the center of the planter so i love the pairing of that that is just absolutely adorable and i'm glad how that worked out so last cutting of today's episode I believe is this guy here this is a donkey's tail that Evelyn gifted me so you'll see it in the plant friend cutting haul and I'm just have it in a white plastic planter for now because it is so leggy and it's just one single tail we're just gonna leave it in a white nursery planter for now um, and then what I could also do is when you uh, handle these guys they will fall apart so what I'll do if I um, I have other little babies and I'll grab them so my grandma can just kind of place them on the top of the soil and it'll like motivate them to grow. All right, so these are the little babies that actually fell off my original burl's tail, donkey's tail, as you can see. There is a lot of babies sprouting up. If you can see here, there is some cute little roots here and I have a bunch of them. So I just love how easy they are to propagate. So if they fall apart, do not throw them away. Hold on to them, let it callus over on a core board, and then what you're gonna do is lay it on dirt. So since this is like pretty much the same plant, we're just gonna go ahead and just place it here for some motivation. And this little nursery pot will act as a little propagation station for these guys. And then in a few weeks when they get bigger we'll go ahead and give them individual nursery planters to become its own plant but for now like i'm not stressed out it'll just stay here and take up the real estate on the top 
So here's just a little quick overview of what it looks like. And I just have it laying on the top here. And we'll just put this in the propagation station area until they get a little bit bigger. And then they'll go in individual nursery planters, which I store on the opposite side of my studio. Whenever I have projects like this, I go ahead and grab a bunch of them. You'll see uh, later on in today's video me uh, reusing them. So this is going to go into my propagation station until it gets bigger, into bigger plants. Then it'll go into a nice ceramic planter. So this is just the current look. I'm glad I was able to take it out of water and place it into dirt. So my grandma's moving along here quickly. We're not even explaining this one. So this particular guy here that my grandma's working on is an aeonium cutting. Now this was living on my propagation station in dirt. So there was a bunch of them that I rooted up in water and I had a few rooting up just placed into dirt. This one had um, been living on my potting station in dirt. And so we're gonna go ahead and place it into my cute little ice cream planter now that it has enough roots and it's a lot stronger and established we went ahead and just placed it into a cute little planter again in the future um, when i want to gift plants to my friends or whatnot i can easily just put this into a nursery planter and give it as a gift but for now i wanted to go ahead and at least give it a new home for growing roots in dirt i think it just was well deserved and i just love seeing these little guys potted up after um, being with me in a propagation station for a good minute now that is all of the cuttings that i want to plant up in today's episode that was one two three four four plant front cuttings planted up in today's episode now we're going to move on to the new babies working still with the succulents we got the two uh, rescue babies here from our recent las vegas haul so we're going to put it into this particular bowl which we just drilled a hole in so both is from las vegas so let's go ahead and open up the planter by squeezing it and then I like to cup it with my hand here and then what we're going to do is loosen up the roots here. So loosen up the roots, check out the root system to make sure that nothing crazy is going on in there and I just can't believe this was for a dollar. So if you look here before my grandma plants it up, take a look at the root system here. Like, it is a very healthy plant. The fact that they put it in the rescue section for $1, originally priced for four, I thought that was a steal. So my grandma is about to place it in here. Now what you could also do is use the end of the toothbrush that I have on my potting station to get right into the nooks or you can use your finger to press it down evenly and get it nice and settled into the planter. And I think that just works out well. I love a big um, type of succulent that takes up a lot of real estate for this type of size of bowls. And I think it looks super cute. I would love to see this guy um, in the mix with all of my plant babies on my shelf. And then I always like to stack up my planters as I work here. And then yeah, just use your fingers or if you want, you can go ahead and get the end of a toothbrush or even you can use the end of your little shovel to get it nice and settled in into the bowl and these type of succulents doesn't need a lot of water so i probably be watering them maybe two three times a month that's it i do miss all of my succulents and cactus every week regardless if they get watered or not and i have had no problems whatsoever so this is the current look i think it's absolutely cute so you know this was fairly inexpensive i got the bundle of bows for just a few dollars and then this was a rescue for a dollar so fairly inexpensive i'm thinking this cost me three dollars to put together so the next one that my grandma has is the spearhead she's taking it out of the nursery planter and then again we're going to loosen up the root system um, to stimulate the roots to grow into its new little um, planter here I'm gonna put the nursery planter on the side. My grandma's gonna loosen up the roots here. Take a look at what's going on. Now this particular spearhead, Senecio, is fairly easy. You can pull it apart to propagate it, give it to different friends, um, or you can just yeah, keep it look. bundled up. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So as my grandma's pulling it apart, you can see senecios are fairly easy to propagate by separation so if i wanted to i could split this in half give it to a plant friend as a gift or make more babies but i like the full look of this i don't have this plant in my collection so my grandma's just going to loosen up the roots a little bit more as you can see there's tons of them 
and then we're gonna see if it works well with this particular cup that we drilled a hole in this was a thrifted find that my mom gave me in Las Vegas and then once we see that it's fairly nice and open here we're gonna see if it works out do I like the aesthetic of it I think yeah. it's perfect that is so cute grandma so now we know that it works out well my grandma can go ahead and put more dirt into the planter to finish up the look and I think that worked out well so you never know what's gonna work with each other as much as I love my plants I love planters and I'm very picky with my planter if I could get all white planters I would and you'll see in Kira's collection she does but my collection is huge my grandma thinks it's a nursery <laughs> I think it's bigger than a nursery um, so it's hard for me to find all white planters with you know within a reasonable price because planters can get really expensive so I do uh, veer off with the cobalt blue and white theme and then terracottas for like the ones that I just can't find planters for for a reasonable price because I could have all white but that would be costing me uh, like a, a, a lot of money because white planters do get expensive if you can't find deals like me so and this worked out well again this is a one dollar rescue and this is a Senecio spearhead don't have this guy here my grandma found it on the way out as we were doing our last come with me in Las Vegas and this is a thrifted little cup that my mom gave me I want to say sometime last year maybe and then we just drilled a hole in it here and that works out well so this would probably cost maybe like maybe two dollars I think that was such a great find. So now we're going to shift gears here. We are literally going to shift plants. So there's a Peperomia here. And this is a variegated Peperomia. I love this guy. This is an obtuse folia. And because, I mean, it looks great. I think that where it's at right now, growth-wise to this planter, it works out great. But we're going to do a little shift because the snow bush came into play. So we're gonna take this guy out of this planter and we're gonna put the snow bush that I just got into this planter. So just a quick shift. And I don't have to shift it, but I want to just because I wanna put my snow bush in this particular planter. So we are going to now use my new thrifted planter that I picked up for less than $2 from my local thrift shop and we are going to put it into this particular guy. So it's just upgrading as you can see. It's fairly a little bit bigger. Not a lot, just a little bit bigger. Um, so it's getting a little upgrade here for more real estate. It's moving into a bigger mansion, Grandma. <laughs> for sure. And then my snow bush is smaller so it's going to go in my Daiso Japan planter. So we are just making a quick switch. Again, we like to make sure that the roots are healthy. And I think that works out well, Grandma. So just a quick switch. And, you know, if I see the need to do a switch like this, I'll do it. Again, this plant is getting a little bit bigger. So I wanted to give it a little bit more real estate to grow in. This particular Pepper Romeo with its waxy leaves is super easy to have in a collection. So if you're fairly new to plants, I highly recommend this really waxy Peperomia. Not fussy at all. As you can see, it is happy here with its rat tail blooms, which is super long. Take a look at that. And here is the finished look, which grandma, don't you think it looks so cute in this thrifted planter? Yes, it does. It matches so well. So that was a little shift. You are now graduated into a bigger mansion here <laughs> for more growth. <laughs> now with this empty Daiso Japan planter, which has a hole already, uh, we're going to put the Hawaiian snow bush, the mini bush that I got in downtown LA into this one because it's a little bit smaller and I think it's going to look super cute. So my grandma is cupcaking the plants, squeezing the planter. I'm stacking my nursery planters here on the side. My grandma's gonna go ahead and just kind of squish the roots open here to stimulate growth. And I'm really excited to see this planted up in today's episode before we go to Arizona. And this plant will live in my bathroom because I did a huge mistake on my original big Hawaiian snow bush over a year ago. And I invested so much money in that plant and it died living in my patio for a couple of days. It just didn't like its living environment. So this is very same. It's pretty much almost the same like a maidenhair fern. Yes. Very fragile. So if you are not looking for a finicky plant, 
veer away from this one because this is very finicky but I'm challenging myself this is a five dollar challenge right here <laughs> I, I thought that was like you know fairly reasonable for me to repurchase a plant that didn't do well in my collection and again smaller than my original one so if something happens to this plant I, I won't feel as bad because I didn't invest that much money in it I think that looks adorable so I got the Daiso Japan planter a while back and then I just love I knew it was gonna work out great in this particular panther. So here is the finished look right here. How adorable is that, Grandma? Extremely adorable. So this particular plant, you have to be careful. It is like made in here. It's very fragile. It does need a lot of humidity. And for this particular plant, you definitely need indirect sunlight. So um, I'll keep you guys posted on this one and it'll live in my bathroom. Well, we'll find a space for this guy because the plants currently living in my bathroom need to live in my bathroom because they're very finicky. So we're going to place this on the side and move along to our next project. Do you remember the Hobbit Jade that I recently got in Las Vegas? So it is um, calloused over and we are going to use this thrifted planter that we just got from here in Los Angeles. And we're going to go ahead and place it into this. I think it's gonna work out well. So let's go ahead and put a little bit of dirt here on the bottom. And then we'll go ahead and place this into here. And we'll use up the rest of the soil. I do have my silver bin full of cactus succulent dirt right here on the ground. But we're gonna just go ahead and reuse the soil here that we have in the tray. And then after this guy, we are going to work on fixing up my pokes. I believe that's where we're going, the direction we are going at. So I love how I was able to put my beautiful Hobbit Jade into my thrifted planter that we just found. So you never know. I love going and thrifting and just holding on to planters because someone like myself who is constantly getting new plants into their collection every week, don't know how that happens. Um, you never know how it's going to work out. Um, having a pairing of a plant and planter matchup. So I'm constantly just housing planters in my collection until I get the right match. And then like you see, if there is something that comes into my collection where I need to do a shift because I see a better match, I'll go ahead and do that. And I don't have a problem doing that at all. And I think that works out well, Grandma. What do you think? So this particular plant is so easy to propagate. I have a similar variation of this, but smaller on my plant shelf. And the way how you would propagate it is by cutting it here. So if I ever would do a cutting off of this, I would take the bottom one right here, and I would cut right along the edge here, and then I can go ahead and uh, put it into a water propagation, and it'll root up, and it can be a plant for a plant friend. Or if you want to do a trade or even sell a cutting, you can go ahead and do that. Here is the final look. I think it's absolutely adorable, Grandma. What do you think? Yep. I think that works out great. It'll probably end up living in the succulent section in front of my big plant shelf here in my patio space. So now that we got all of this planted up, I'm so excited to be doing the next part of the video. So here it is, Grandma. We finally come to this point in planting life. This is, we'll lift it up here. If you can hold this and I'll show the trails in the current condition. My, what's left of my luscious, once luscious Marble Queen Poto. So as you can see, there's lots of trails and this thing was really full and lush at one point. But over time and being in my patio, you can see that it got leggy. Now, don't worry, this can be resolved and we're gonna do that right now. So we're gonna go ahead and take this whole thing out mm -hmm. to see what's going on here. So just. Just kind of handle the trails with care. We're gonna empty out the planter here. See what's going on. And then what we're gonna do is see what's going on in the root system. My grandma just gave this plant a water. And then we're just gonna work one at a time for each trail and see what the status is. Now we have a bunch of upcycled water propagation stations here. And so maybe we can put it here on the side. So as we work, we can just stick them in here. So we have a bunch of water propagation here. So what we wanna do is 
take a look at this here so there's nodes on here and if you see with these little nodes if you stick them into water it'll eventually give you roots so when i take a look at this particular trail this one is so beautiful i want to keep this and i want to work just a little bit down here and we're going to cut right here so this part of it will be in water and eventually give me roots and it'll be nice and full again so we'll cut right below this long node Mm -hmm. So you see here, we just did a little snippet right above that long node and then all of this, well most of it will go into water and eventually root up. So I love this particular cutting here and then we're just going to stick it into water. And if you take a look here, you can see all of the nodes is into water and we're going to leave it here and work with our next trail here so we're gonna go right through the plant here and inspect one at a time what's going on so again here is another guy that's fairly full and these can be all individual plants at the end so we want to look here and we want to cut maybe right along here. there mm -hmm. so here's all the long nodes which will eventually give roots this is a really great cutting and then we're going to go ahead and stick it into the same water propagation. And we're going to move along to our next one here. So here is an interesting trail here. So there's multiple trails, but I love the fullness of it. So what we're going to do is look at what's going on here. And I want to say, no, a little bit lower because this is a big cutting. Let's go low. Let's go right here. Here. Perfect. All right. So this was very leggy here on the bottom. As you can see, there's lots of big nodes here. So we're going to go ahead and move along with our next guy here. So we're not going to cut this because this yeah. can grow into a plant. This is full, so we'll leave this here. So we're only looking for leggy guys. The rest will stay with the mother plant. Um, this one here, we're going to cut and use this for the mother plant. So let's cut right there. This will stay here. Again, you see lots of real estate to grow roots here. Beautiful cutting. And this looks good here. This looks good here. This looks good. I don't want to chop off if it's not that bad. Yeah, this guy will have to be so all the way there. All right, so this one was really leggy as you can see. Maybe it's right here, Grandma. Hold off a little bit more right under that. So there's a really long node right here. This is a fairly beautiful variegated cutting. We're going to go ahead and pop it into water. And I think we're almost done. Yay, two more. All right, so here is one guy here, maybe right there. All right, so here is our next cutting and we're just going to go ahead and stick it into water. Making sure that the node hits the water here. And then here is our last one that we are going to be touching for this fix up here. So as you can see, it is very leggy. So let's go ahead and cut right under here. You see that long node. Yep. And then this is the last cutting here and you can see there's a new leaf unfurling here. So we're just going to go ahead and pop that into water so this is what's left of the plant one now more, one more here oh yes scraggly guy let's take a look at this so i have hope i see a little baby leaf right here we're gonna stick it into water propagation and i'm using up two bottles for this so let's go ahead and just look at what we have left and the current condition okay. here. So this is the current condition of the plant. Already, I love what it looks like. Um, let's, it's very rooty, as you can see. So I'm going to put it back into a nursery planter, I'm thinking. So I just have an empty nursery planter, and we're just going to stick it into here. And it'll go in my propagation station until it gets fuller and I'll check the status on this plant. So that is going to be 
the fix up for this plant. So if this ever happens to you, don't be discouraged. I wanna share with you what the current status is. So this is the current status of the Marble Queen Pothos after it got a trim. So I'm gonna keep this particular guy on my rescue section area. When it gets nice and full again, I'll put it into a beautiful planter. But for now, this is the current condition already. It looks better already that we did a and trim this up. This is the current status of the water propagation. And I have it in two bottles here. And this will live on my potting bench until it roots up. So it just looks like this. And then again, once this gets rooted up, what I could do is put it all back together in the same planter uh, so that it is nice and full again. And I can also give some as um, plant trades or even gifts for the holidays. So just be resourceful if things like this happen to you. You can turn this into a gift and who knows the holidays is coming up and i would love to give some to my plant friends so we're going to set this on the side and we're going to work on another similar project like this all right so this is the next one that i want to work on and you see this in the background of my videos along my plant shelf and it's been growing up on my pl plant shelf for a good minute but it's becoming very leggy so i want to go ahead and fix this guy as you can see here there is a lot of real estate that has opened up and we're gonna just go ahead and fix so it. So because I have a wooden stake here, which I probably got from Home Depot, I'm gonna go ahead and undo it. So it's been hanging out on some Velcro here, which I love using the Velcro tape method. And then I'm gonna take off the wire stakes here. I have two holding them up. And then I wanna see what the condition of the plant is and then we can go ahead and fix it up. This can also be a trailing plant. Also, for this particular guy, this would work really well on a moss pole. So there are several things you can do with a trailing plant like this. So what I'm gonna do is look at the current conditions. Now I've never seen it actually trail long. Uh, this is the current status of it. So now that I see it trailing long, we can go ahead and fix it. So. We're gonna put the planter here in the potting tray and then we're gonna look at it one at a time. And I think this is a great particular trail here. So grandma, do you wanna put it back up here and have it hug against here? And then if we need more, which we probably will need more, we'll go ahead and get more Velcro tape. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get more Velcro tape. So that looks good. And then this particular guy is very leggy. So let's go ahead and see where this starts and where I want to make the cut. So let's just get a cut right here. Here it is. So this guy is very leggy. As you can see, there's tons of roots here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut right above the leaf here and in between that long node and get two cuttings here. So this will be one cutting. And then we, this will be another cutting. We're gonna put it into the bottle here that we have already set up for us on the side. And this will be really great for the plant too because we can go ahead and fill up the planter and then fix up the trails here. This one looks pretty, mm, I mean, it's salvageable. I could definitely, no. My grandma doesn't wanna keep it, so. Let's go ahead and put, roll right mm -hmm. here, right under, under, here. Yep. All right, so here's another one that we're making a cut on, and then we're gonna make two cuttings from this. So when I take a look at the roots here, in between the leaves, they're spaced out. What I wanna do is make a cut right here. Mm -hmm. This will be one cutting, and then this will be another cutting here. Place it into the water propagation bottles. Moving along with the next one. This is probably the one that I want to deal with the most. As you can see, look at how long and leggy this got. But take a look at how beautiful this trail is. So this was my longest trail. We want to go ahead and find where the longest node is. I want to say right there. Okay. And then what I want to do is maybe cut right... Maybe right here. Grandma, cut right here for me, please. So these guys, keep them because they will give you new babies, even though if there's nothing on there. So we're just gonna stick that into water propagation. 
And then this guy here, I love the long trail. And this itself could just be a whole new plant. We're gonna go ahead and stick it into the bottle and join the rest of the cuttings. So this is so good for the plant too. So this is another trail that I wanna keep. So let's go ahead and get it fixed up here. So I'm taking a look at here, making sure everything is separated. The plant looks better already. I'm gonna get some Velcro tape to Velcro it up here and then we can go ahead and show you the finished look. All right, so this is the Velcro tape that I have. I still have a lot left over here. The sun is shifting here. So we're just gonna make a cut here with my garden scissors and my grandma is going to Velcro the last trail that I wanna keep on this plant. This is what the current look of the plant is. It looks great already. And then I'll show you the two propagation bottles. Here's one. And then here's another one. And these will get rooted up. And then I what I think I'm gonna do with these guys once it's rooted up is repot it into this pot here so it can become nice and full again. And we'll definitely keep you guys updated in an upcoming planting with Julin. When it's ready, we'll go ahead and do it on the next episode. But for now, it'll be housed on my potting bench in my propagation station area. And so just be aware when glass comes through your kitchen, upcycle it and use it for propagation stations. And these are actually old Snapple bottles. And I love that I was able to use them up in today's propagation part of today's video. All right, so as the sun is shifting, we are now coming to the last part of the video, which is my zigzag cactus. Now this is just another baby because I do have this plant already and a really big one that's actually sitting next to the left of my grandma and for this particular one what i want to do is i want to take it apart so this is fairly easy to take this guy off you just peel it off like this and the plastic hanger which i collect for some odd reason will will go off to the side so what you want to do is cupcake the plant out and then we are going to just take a look to see how many babies we can get out of this guy so my grandma is going to just work her way through trying to pull them all apart and we're going to see how many babies we can get by separating them so as she separates them i'll show you guys how many babies we get here's one beautiful baby here's our second baby here there's lots of babies here's another baby here i love how they're just pulling apart here here's another one Whoa, look at the roots on this one. How fun is this? Very giving plant. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is this together? I can't tell. I think it is, yeah? Seven, eight, nine. Is that one together or separate? Ten, eleven. Oh my goodness, is that that is a lot of babies? Let's count one, two, three, four, five. This is the biggest. There's two here. Five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, guys, there is eleven babies in here. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get eleven nursery planters and then we are going to repot them separately. What I think I'm going to do is I'll probably sell half of them. So, if you guys are interested, hit me up and I will be able to send them out to you guys if you are in the US. And then you can definitely buy a cutting from me. And then the other half I'm gonna keep for myself and I'm probably gonna give them as gifts to my plant friends when it comes to the holiday season, which is right around the corner. And I'll probably do more projects like this, um, either from my collection itself, uh, you know, propagation by separation, or I'll just buy a plant that I really love um, in my collection. And I'm gonna do the same thing what I just did now, separating them and then regrowing them into bigger plants. So we're just gonna upcycle our nursery planters here and put them into 
new homes one at a time. So maybe this guy, Grandma, since it's big. How fun is this? This is my favorite cactus. I had to get this and I couldn't pass up on it because this is such a rare cactus for a lot of people. It's very hard, um, but I've been very fortunate enough to find it in Los Angeles. And actually, like I seen it in the Bay Area in a Come With Me um, episode that I did, but it was very like small and super expensive. This particular plant is very expensive, so I'm really happy that I was able to get another one and separate it for you guys and for gifts coming up for the holidays. I think plants is, again, because I'm a plant enthusiast, um, I'm going to say this, but it's true. A plant is a gift that keeps on giving. And I just love being able to see the plant grow on me as the months and years go by. And I think this is such a fun project to do with my grandma as well, with her visiting here. And all of this will live on my propagation station on my shelf that is on the left side of my potting bench. Um, and then if I go ahead and sell these off, what I'm going to do is place them into um, a shipping system where I'm going to just ship it bare root. So there will be no soil because these are mature um, babies with roots. I will go ahead and ship them off with no dirt because then shipping will be cheaper and it'll be uh, less messy when it comes to um, putting them into a shipping little package. So we're just going to go ahead and place the rest of them into nursery planters and I think that just works out well. I have tons of empty nursery planters from all of my plant adventures and I just went ahead and grabbed a bunch of them to put them into use like right now. So take a look at these cuttings. I am like so obsessed with this project because look at how healthy they are. I'm just in love. This is so cool. I'll definitely keep you guys posted. And I know this is a lot of people's wish list plant. At one point it was my wish list plant and I was just really, really blessed to have been able to get a big mother plant, um, which is behind my grandma to her left. And then this will be like uh, just a fun project and I'll be able to share some with you guys as well and my plant friends. And I'll probably end up keeping one as a souvenir. Who knows? I might keep this guy because he's looking super cute. There's one big zigzag on the bottom here and then there's four babies popping up from it. So I'll probably keep the cutting that calls out to me the most as a little plant souvenir to just kind of remember this project and then I'll sell half of them and then give half away as gifts for the holidays coming up. So very fun project. Again, whenever I'm gifting plants, I'm always gifting a plant that I would like um, in my collection. And the zigzag plant is my favorite cactus to date. I think it's so cute, so fun, and a great trailing plant. And it just makes me happy every time I walk into my space and see it. So my grandma is potting along. I believe we got some two planters here. So grandma, my plant assistant, is working her magic here. And I am so, so happy that we were able to do this today. And I'm like really happy that I came across this particular plant again um, earlier this week in downtown LA. Who knew? I just, it was just by timing, you know. Um, he had five in his shop and I picked the best one and I, I knew in my mind what I wanted to do. I wanted to separate it, sell some so that you guys could have it if it was on your wish list. And then I'll keep the rest to grow for myself and then as well as give it to plant friends for the holidays because Christmas is coming up and I can't like imagine uh, myself not having to share this plant with my plant friends. So very happy with this purchase and I hope this inspires you to think about it when you're plant shopping. Think about the plant as an investment. You can go ahead, separate it to make more babies, propagate it to make more babies, separate it and share it with your plant friends as gifts or even if you go plant shopping like Catherine and I, she does that a lot where when we plant shop, she thinks about splitting the plant with me as a share. So I love that a lot and again, this makes great plants gifts and I'm really excited that I was able to do this project with my grandma. Are you having fun or what grandma? <laughs> Playing dirt, yeah. mm -hmm. Isn't it so cool to see the plant separated into multiple yeah. babies? Mm -hmm. I'm just so glad how that worked out and then 
We got one last cutting and we'll wrap up the video. So that's it guys. Um, I'm really happy that we got a lot done today. We have plant friend cuttings planted up into beautiful planters. We got some shifts happening in my collection which happens from time to time. And then we fixed up two of my trailing babies that just got a little leggy over time and that happens. But I hope that inspires you to fix up your plant if it happens to your particular trailing plant. And we'll go ahead and propagate it. Again, what I could do is make it into multiple plants um, just like this once it's rooted up. Or I can go ahead and put it back into the same planter that it came from with its original mother plant to make it fuller, which I think I'm going to do. And then maybe three or four of them separate it into different planters and um, you know I can use it as trades or give it to plant friends as gifts. So that is going to wrap up today's video. Now take a look. Everybody got potted up into individual planters. I'm going to bring it into this point of view so you can see. So here it is right here all potted up into individual planters. So stay tuned and find out what will happen to these beautiful cuttings. I absolutely love them and for this particular project, um, I'll keep you guys posted. So that is going to wrap up this project. I will keep you guys posted if you guys are interested in getting a cutting. I will probably sell half of them. I'm not too sure yet, but definitely a few will go for sale and the rest will either stay with me or be gifted during the holidays to my plant friends. So stay tuned so for that. Now that we did all of the planting for today's episode, we're going to clean up the space put everybody together for today's plant gang and wrap up the video. So the Tiffany Blue table is covered with today's projects. I wanna talk about all of the propagations that we did today. So as you see here, I have two water vessels here. I have my Marble Queen Pothos trimmed up along with its cuttings here on the side in two water propagation bottles. I have my Burrows Tail that Evelyn gave me potted up in a white nursery planter. I have the little babies that fell off from my mother plant on here which has lots of babies as you can see. They'll hang out here until they get bigger and then I'll put them into small nursery planters. And then I have all of my zigzag babies here as you can see there's a whole bunch of them here all potted up individually into nursery planters and then we come into this section here which has all of the potted babies that um, we potted up in today's video along with my trailing baby here that is nice and propped up against its wooden stake I think we did really good today. So I just did a quick overview of everything that we did today. What's not in the frame right now is all of the propagation cutting, which is taking up a lot of real estate on the Tiffany Blue table. Really happy was able to do that. Thank you, Grandma, for all your help. Mm -hmm. And then what do you see here in this shot here is all of the babies that got plowed up in beautiful planters, which I'm really excited about. So let's do a quick recap here. We got the Aeonium cuttings from Tanya in a cute little Arizona thrifted um, creamer which I think is super cute we got a hole in it and then I got another rescue here for a dollar from Las Vegas into a bowl that I got from home goods in Las Vegas and we put a hole in it and then we have another aeonium cutting here I believe that one could be from the Bay Area or Tanya at this point I don't really know because I've been getting a lot of aeoniums in my collection I want to say that one is from Tanya I have it in a beautiful ice cream planter and I want to say this uh, Calancho cutting is from Evelyn, also in a beautiful ice cream planter. And then this is another one that my grandma had eyed out in our last Come With Me in Las Vegas, a $1 rescue, which I think is super cute, the Senecio Spearhead. And we potted up in a drilled little cup here that we just did. And this is from Las Vegas, a thrift. Quick switch here with my variegated Obtusifolia Peperomia. And I absolutely love this guy here. And I put it into my recent thrifted Los Angeles planter, which we put a hole in it. I have my beautiful cuttings from the Bay Area, and it finally got roots. So I put it into my beautiful planter that I got thrifted from Arizona, which we drilled a hole in. And I just love that look. It just looks so cute in it. And then the last two behind me, I have my Las Vegas Jade. And this is my beautiful... Um, Hobbit Jade and I have it in a thrifted planter that we just got from Los Angeles and then way behind to the right of that is my beautiful snow bush which we uh, ended up 
getting my Daiso Japan planter emptied out and then that guy went into there and then behind is just my redone trailing baby so i hope you guys enjoyed this long planting with julian episode i'm so glad that my grandma was able to do a guest appearance in a planting with julian episode for whatever days we had here which was only three nights together here in santa monica at my place but i'm glad we were able to do all the propagation projects along with these babies so this is a very big planting with julian episode you got to see a lot of plant tips and plant techniques that i do with planting propagation and um, I hope it inspires you, whether it's thrifting for planters or um, propagating plants that you purchase and want to make more babies or fixing up plants. So I hope this inspires you. Um, we did a lot today. I hope you guys learned some new tips and tricks. And that is going to wrap up today's Planting with Julian episode. So stay tuned um, to see what I end up doing with my cuttings. I'm so excited that I was able to do this big project today. If you guys enjoyed this Planting with Julian episode, definitely give this video a thumbs up and stay tuned. Um, I am so happy that my grandma was able to spend some time with me here in Santa Monica. Grandma, do you have anything to say? And by the way, what is your favorite plant that we planted up today? Okay, Grandma likes the Hobbit Jade from Las Vegas and it works so great in that thrifted planter that we got from Los Angeles. So I will see you guys probably if we don't film another video tomorrow, which I would like to film one video before we jump on the airplane. That is the goal when I get off of work. We will definitely see you guys in Arizona and I'm so excited to set up the sewing machine there and work on our projects there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And that's going to wrap up today's video. Find more on my blog at ilovejulian.blogspot.com. Until next time, aloha from Santa Monica. Bye.